Good evening. Uh, I'm Simon Platten. I'm a director of Tamar Grow Local. And um, where to begin? I, I get five minutes later on to, to give a, a fuller talk. But um, Tamar Grow Local is a community interest company that was set up in 2007. Uh, primarily to increase the food security of our, our local communities. So from a, an operational perspective, um, food equity is, is kind of at the heart of why we, why we were set up in the way we were. The uh, first few years of uh, our organisation were to set up a number of community food initiatives. And then we really got involved in food equity after being contacted by a really quite inspirational housing association, Plymouth Community Homes to see if we could uh, work with them to, to help uh, increase the amount of fruit and vegetables consumed by their tenants. And then our work has really led from there and I'll get to talk a bit more about that later on. Uh, just to pick up on the partnerships thing, that's been key to, to most of the work that we've done is being able to work in partnership with community groups, housing associations, local authorities. Um, Tomar Grow Local has done a variety and continues to do a variety of, of action around food equity and but I just wanted to pick up on something Jade said it is never enough it's never good enough <laughs> and, uh, the things that we we've been doing it's very easy to see their limitations and pick them apart but we've we've tried to do the best we can with the resources that we have so we've done a number of, of things we started by creating a number of community food projects which allowed people to engage recreationally in food production, uh, some of which they could, you know, then produce for themselves. Uh, and that also built a kind of groundswell of momentum around local food production, which we, when we started a food hub, uh, hoped to translate into uh, willing customers who would support the local, local producers that then supplied the hub, and also the community groups that could sell surplus to reduce their, their costs and membership fees and such. Uh, the food hub that we we currently run has uh, um, pretty good support. We we sell produce from around ninety different producers, and it goes around delivers around the rural area of the Tamar Valley and into the city of Plymouth. But the the projects I want I wanted to talk about really have come out of partnerships with organisations in the city of Plymouth. Plymouth has a number of, of a num experiences a number of issues. There was a fairness commission report in two thousand and eight which highlighted. Uh, food and fuel poverty as, as key issues that the city was, was facing. There's a large crescent of multiple community areas in Plymouth that are experiencing multiple, multiple indices of deprivation. And this overlaps very clearly with its, the areas of, of um, previous industrial activity that is no longer uh, current. And so, uh, and also Plymouth had a, a large uh, council housing stock, which was pushed over to uh, to set up a new uh, organisation, Plymouth Community Homes, which has 16,000 properties in, in Plymouth and house roughly one in five of the, of the population. So uh, when Plymouth Community Homes contacted us and said, can you, can you do something? Can you come up with a plan to help us engage our tenants in, in food production and, and help change diets to become a bit more healthy? Um, we, we jumped at that opportunity. We, we worked with them to create an action plan. We created various community food initiatives, but that partnership was then uh, in the right place at the right time when the a Cities of Service project came to Plymouth and that enabled Plymouth City Council to support two larger projects in the city. One of those became Grow Share Cook, which is a project where uh, families are referred to the Grow Share Cook project. They will receive uh, free vegetables on a fortnightly basis uh, and also have the opportunity to, to go to cooking workshops run by another um, community interest company called Food is Fun. We started doing that in 2014 um, and we took a stand early on not to use food surplus. Uh, for our project, it wasn't a good fit. The, we wanted to have something which would be a balanced box to deliver. We wanted also to buy it locally off our local food producers. And the food surplus options that we had at the time, we, we didn't have any kind of um, power over, over what would, would become available through that supply chain. But also the cost, the cost of us going to collect it, store it, and then have to work with it without having any pre-planning time. Um, it was actually cheaper for us to, to purchase premium quality vegetables straight from local producers through our food hub network. 
And that, that also dovetails really nicely in with a, uh, a farm start project, which we run. So our farm start tenants have a, a, an automatic market that we can guarantee to buy from, from the Great Share Cook project. So it, it really has got mutual support with other, other elements of Tamar Grow Locals activity. But the vegetables that we uh, purchase then get delivered, uh, packed and delivered to um, folk in Plymouth and uh, cooking workshops are very successful. It was noted early on that it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a lack of skills around cooking that was absent, it was a lack of confidence. And just bringing people together to, to make mistakes together visibly and to, to learn new skills and hints and tips from each other, that was, that was the biggest value for those cooking workshops. At the end of that first two year iteration of the project, we were uh, we had a, a survey which uh, noted that 79% of the respondents said they had a healthier diet as a response of it. But we also had an independent analysis of the social return on investment. And uh, that came out at for every one pound invested in the Grow Share Cook project, it resulted in £15.79 worth of social return, which is quite an incredible number. Um, I'm not sure it's true, but you know, it's good. It's a good project, it's big, <laughs> it's a big number. But um, that was the first iteration over the first two years. And it's been going, it's still going now, but it's changed its focus and funding over the period of years. And from following that, it was funded by the Housing Association and Plymouth City Council directly for a year. After that, the change of focus went to uh, people who'd recently been, been diagnosed with diabetes or living with diabetes. Uh, Plymouth has a, a very large proportion of people relative to the rest of the country who are living with diabetes. And so we were able to mobilize some public health funding uh, to continue this project and the, the cooking workshops that were then organized around uh, controlling diabetes. And then COVID happened and it then continued through COVID uh with the cooking workshops going online uh but using covid response money to to finance the the shopping and uh the project continues it's funded up until april this year we we're not sure what's happening after that but that's one of the things that that we've been running for the last few years aiming to get fresh fresh fruit and vegetables into communities that wouldn't otherwise have access to it access is the big issue in the rural areas it's kind of understandable if if getting to a local shop is difficult because public transport is is just not there and the shops when you when you can get to them do have some fruit and veg but not a full range for little village shops but you kind of think that in a city that's different but famously the part of Plymouth called Ernie Settle you you can't buy fresh carrots in Ernie Settle <laughs> you just can't you have to get a bus or a taxi or uh, a long walk out of that community in order to get to a shop which has fresh vegetables and uh, food hubs that do home delivery are one possible way of doing that but you have to make it financially accessible so we've tried doing that in a couple of ways also and uh, one of those is uh, leveraging the support from our loyal food hub customers that we have so the, the bag of vegetables that are delivered through go share cook project are also available on our food hub and our customers can buy that and add an extra pound on as a donation to the uh, Grow Share Cook project, or they can buy a suspended bag in much the same way as Jade was talking about uh, the, the, the butchery. Uh, you can buy a suspended bag for someone else and that's delivered as part of that project. Uh, and that has allowed us to supply an additional 12 families for fortnightly a year. Um, and that's working quite well. The uh, Housing Association decided to, to not necessarily support the Grow Share Cook project after uh, four or five years and came up with their, their own iteration of that project called New Home, New You, where whenever a new member of, whenever someone moves house and moves into one of their properties, they're given a raft of support because um, it's a good nudge point to change people's lifestyles. One of those uh, things that they're offered is three months supply of vegetables from, from the, the food hub. And uh, so we're able to deliver the, the, the bag of vegetables to them for, for three or six months sometimes uh, as part of that project. The other thing we've tried is rather like the sliding scale thing is to make voucher schemes available where we can have a voucher code that you can put into the OFN system to give you a, a discount uh, across the board. And that, that kind of prioritizes the element of choice from a, from a food hub while still making it financially accessible. And then the delivery system makes it 
more physically accessible. That that worked variably. We're hoping to try that again. Um, I think I'm pretty much covering most of what I wanted to say. I'll happily answer questions in a minute. But the, the main thing is nothing is ever enough, and there's always improvements can be that can be made to these interventions. And uh, there's there's lots of things that can be done by food hubs, particularly to to increase accessibility and equity. Uh, what can we do locally? For me, I think it's about uh, being very pragmatic and strategic with the resources that you have to hand. Uh, if if you're presented with only sticking plaster projects, then perhaps the best thing to do is to look to how you can join them together so that the legacy from one uh, adds to the, the, the effectiveness of the next project, or if they're running concurrently, they can be mutually supportive. And I think by joining things together, you can create a a constellation of projects happening locally that can be greater than their individual uh, impact. Um, people talk about enterprise stacking. I, I prefer constellations because it really does then, uh, that metaphor brings in the ecology of the stacking projects. The, the stacking maybe doesn't. So the relationships between things. And I think food hubs are best placed to make those kinds of, uh, to be the, the spine of those kinds of constellations. They are the, the hub that all these projects can feed into and draw resources from. So a food hub can have a voucher scheme, can support a farm start project, can support local CSAs, can be the delivery arm and the distribution system uh, for a number of producers to, to help them uh, make their businesses more viable, but also increase the physical accessibility into, into food deserts, both rurally and in the city. Um, and they can have pay it forward schemes, which can um, deliver in rural areas as well as urban ones and, and can take with, the pay it forward money that we get from, in, from the Food Hub and Tamar Grow Local is, is our money. It's not dictated what we spend on it uh, by a funder. So we can prioritize where those things go. And we, we support the, the rural food hub, the rural food banks in Callington and Tavistock with those projects where it's difficult to get funding to support rural areas. So uh, the Food Hub, I think, is the, is the backbone of a constellation of projects that can, can happen locally. <laughs>